I believe it incumbent upon the next president of the United States to get this country moving again, to get our economy moving ahead, to set before the American people its goals, its unfinished business, and then throughout the world, appoint the best people we can get, ambassadors who can speak the language, not merely people who made a political contribution, but who can speak the language, bring students here, let them see what kind of a country we have. Mr. Nixon said that we should not regard them as pawns in the Cold War. We should identify ourselves with them. If that were true, why didn't we identify ourselves with the people of Africa? Why didn't we bring students over here? Why did we suddenly offer Congo 300 students last June when they had the tremendous revolt? That was more than we had offered to all of Africa the year before from the federal government. I believe that this party, Republican Party, has stood still really for 25 years, its leadership has. It opposed all of the programs of President Roosevelt and others for minimum wage and for housing and economic growth and development of our natural resources, the Tennessee Valley and all the rest. And I believe that if we can get a party which believes in movement, which believes in going ahead, then we can reestablish our position in the world. Strong defense, strong in economic growth, justice for our people, guarantee of constitutional rights so that people will believe that we practice what we preach. And then around the world, particularly to try to reestablish the atmosphere which existed in Latin America at the time of Franklin Roosevelt. He was a good neighbor in Latin America because he was a good neighbor in the United States. Because they saw us as a society that was compassionate, that cared about people, that was moving this country ahead. I believe it my responsibility as the leader of the Democratic Party in 1960 to try to warn the American people that in this crucial time we can no longer afford to stand still. We can no longer afford to be second best. I want people all over the world to look to the United States again, to feel that we're on the move, to feel that our high noon is in the future. I want Mr. Khrushchev to know that a new generation of Americans who fought in Europe and Italy and the Pacific for freedom in World War II have now taken over in the United States and that they're going to put this country back to work again. I don't believe that there's anything this country cannot do. I don't believe there's any burden or any responsibility that any American would not assume to protect his country, protect our security to advance the cause of freedom. And I believe it incumbent upon us now to do that. Franklin Roosevelt said in 1936 that that generation of Americans had a rendezvous with destiny. I believe in 1960 and 61 and 2 and 3, we have a rendezvous with destiny. And I believe it incumbent upon us to be the defenders of the United States and the defenders of freedom. And to do that, we must give this country leadership and we must get America moving again. Senator Kennedy has said tonight again what he has said several times in the course of this, these debates and in the campaign, that America is standing still. America is not standing still. It has not been standing still. Anybody that says America has been standing still for the last seven and a half years hasn't been traveling in America. He's been in some other country. Let's get that straight right away. Now, the second point we have to understand is this, however. America has not been standing still. But America cannot stand pat. We can't stand pat for the reason that we're in a race, as I've indicated. We can't stand pat because it is essential with the conflict that we have around the world that we not just hold our own, that we not keep just freedom for ourselves. It is essential that we extend freedom, extend it to all the world. And this means more than what we've been doing. It means keeping America even stronger militarily than she is. It means seeing that our economy moves forward even faster than it has. It means making more progress in civil rights than we have, so that we can be a splendid example for all the world to see. But we aren't going to move America forward, and we aren't going to be able to lead the world to win this struggle for freedom if we have a permanent inferiority complex about American achievements. Because we are first in the world in space, as I've indicated. We are first in science, we are first in education, and we're going to move even further ahead with the kind of leadership that we can provide in these years ahead. One other point I would make, what could you do? Senator Kennedy and I are candidates for the presidency of the United States. And in the years to come, it will be written that one or the other of us was elected and that he was or was not a great president. What will determine whether Senator Kennedy or I, if I am elected, was a great president? It will not be our ambition that will determine it, because greatness is not something that is written on a campaign poster. 
It will be determined to the extent that we represent the deepest ideals, the highest feelings and faith of the American people. In other words, the next president, as he leads America in the free world, can be only as great as the American people are great. And so I say in conclusion, keep America's faith strong. See that the young people of America particularly have faith in the ideals of freedom and faith in God, which distinguishes us from the atheistic materialists who oppose us.